Hello there. A no-deal withdrawal from the European Union is better than betraying voters by prolonging the Brexit negotiations, says Liam Fox. The International Trade Secretary, Liam Fox, said that prolonging the Brexit negotiations would be a complete betrayal of voters. When asked, should the Article 50 negotiation phase be extended if there was no deal on the table by Brexit Day, he said, The public have told us it wasn't a consultation to leave the EU, and the public already wonders why it's going to take more than four years after the referendum for us to fully remove ourselves from the EU. To attempt to extend our membership even longer, many voters would regard as a complete betrayal by the political class, and I think they would be right. He also said it was time for the EU27 leaders to get the Eurocrats to put the economic well-being of the citizens of the EU ahead of the Commission's political ideology. And his fellow Tory Brexiteer, Jacob Rees-Mogg, was quick to give his support to the Trade Secretary, saying... Extending Article 50 is the definition of failure for the government. And that is exactly the stance we should be taking, especially in the light of the news that Theresa May's efforts to circumvent Brussels and peddle her Chequers deal face-to-face -face with member state leaders has not worked. The Independent reports... British attempts to bypass the European Commission in Brexit talks by dealing directly with member states are failing as national governments line up to back the official EU position. Now I wonder if those EU citizens whose jobs come under threat as the UK starts buying stuff from elsewhere in the world would have the same view. And the anti-Brexit fear-mongering is now coming in torrents with the likes of Timothy Garton Ash saying in The Guardian that a post-no-deal Brexit UK would become a rancid, angry Britain, a society riven by domestic divisions and economic difficulties, let down by its ruling classes, fetid with humiliation and resentment. Any such country is a danger both to itself and to its neighbours. Yet another person, it seems, with an extremely low opinion of the people of the UK. And as a result, he says, the masses would blame the Europeans, especially the French, he writes, and demand we don't pay the so-called Brexit divorce bill. They would also ask why we were helping to defend them. To be fair, the author is not putting the whole blame on the people of the UK voting to leave. He does say that the EU needs to be flexible to prevent this sort of outcome. But he is pushing what I warned would be pushed for, and that is this so-called pragmatic Brexit. On the British side, we need three things traditionally associated with the country, but of late in short supply. Pragmatic realism, a credible democratic process and robust civility, he writes. But as I've said before, all this continued talk of a pragmatic Brexit means no Brexit at all. Hard Brexit and Brexit mean the same thing. Any other qualifier, such as soft or pragmatic, is in reality a form of remain or a brino, with the Remainers then able to use this as a springboard to extending the Article 50 process while they try and secure a second referendum, which is the weapon of choice of the EU lovers, as we all know. And keeping the fear-mongering up, the NME is reporting that the organiser of the WOMAD festival, Chris Smith, is claiming that the post-Brexit referendum visa process is difficult and humiliating for performers entering the UK. As a result, Smith says, it has become harder to get performers to this year's event. And he told the Radio Times, The world has never needed events like WOMAD more than it does now. It stands for tolerance and understanding and learning and openness, but that culture is being crushed as politicians lurch to the right. The world of music, arts and dance, better known as the WOMAD Festival, was founded by Peter Gabriel in 1982. So you have to wonder if it's harder to get into this country today 
than it was in the 1980s. I'd also have a hard time telling 17.4 million voters that we had to ignore them because we can't get a few musicians to fill a music festival stage once a year. But you can already see that we're in for a summer of intense anti-Brexit scaremongering with unsubstantiated claim after unsubstantiated claim. But our Nigel is doing his bit to combat the negativity. The former UKIP leader appeared on the ITV This Morning show today so he could explain the Brexit concept to Love Island star Hayley Hughes. The pair had met before and Hayley said today, When me and Nigel spoke, we said it was harder for the younger generation to learn about it because we sit on social media and things and it's not like a big part on social media. Farage said that politicians needed to engage on social media more in order to connect with younger voters, who generally don't buy newspapers or watch the news. But when asked by co-presenter Sarah Cox, is that a good idea when you see Trump's tweets? Farage replied, Well, you can disagree with the content, but the one thing Donald Trump has done is connected with the nation. So... Please let us all know what you think by leaving a comment below. Thank you for watching. Please do like and share this video. And also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.